We can't tow it out of the environment, but we can make it out of cardboard. Welcome to another episode of The Gamesmith! In today's episode, we're going to be using the simplest materials and the simplest tools to create modular shipwreck maps for use on our game table. However, because we're going to be using these maps also as scatter terrain, they're performing two functions at once. To start, I want to share this 24 by 30 inch shipwreck map that is printed on a reusable dry erase surface. You can find this map at the Paizo website, other online stores, or at your local game store. While this double-sided map is great, for me it lacks a multi-use functionality, especially for adventures like Skull and Shackles and the Razor Coast, where characters are likely to come across over a dozen shipwrecks. As a result, we're going to make our own modular shipwreck maps. As we do with most of our builds here at the Gamesmith, we're going to start with our basing materials. We could use corrugated cardboard since it's the most abundant material and it's usually free. We could also use chipboard, which is sturdier than corrugated cardboard, but we don't need it to support much weight. Instead, we're going to use this single-ply cardboard that is very similar to that of a cereal box, but it doesn't have the laminated finish on one side. I picked up a bunch of these cardboard sheets at the local comic book store. They are used to divide up the comic books inside the shipping boxes, and they were just going to recycle them anyway, so I asked for them. They are 10 inches by 13 and a half inches in size, so we can fit a lot of map onto a single sheet. They're about the size of a large cereal box. To begin, we're going to use a Sharpie pen to draw a square grid like on a sheet of graph paper on several of our thin sheets of cardboard. We're using the standard one inch square, but the beauty of mapping this way is that you can draw it in whatever scale you prefer. If the pieces of cardboard that you are using are smaller, I suggest that you create more gridded sections. If you're changing the size of your gridded squares, try to maximize the amount of surface that you can use. Next, we'll cut away the excess edges of our cardboard sheet. Since the cardboard is so thin, a bit of pressure on the utility knife will cut it in one or two passes. Make sure to hold on to the excess since we're going to use it later. Before we start drawing the hull of our shipwreck, I wanted to talk about these French curves. These are three of the set of 28 curvilinear rulers used in drafting and design, invented by a 19th century German mathematician, Ludwig Burmester. These templates are awesome tools for drawing linear curves, so we're using them to define the bow and stern edges of our modular maps. Depending on the material they're made from, they're not expensive and can be used in all manner of projects. We're going to be building multiple decks for our shipwreck map, so I'm going to start with the largest deck first. To scale, the deck will be 30 feet or 6 5-foot squares across at the midship and 10 feet or 2 5-foot squares across at the stern or back of the ship. To get the proportions correct, the aft of the ship will also be 6 5-foot squares up from the bottom of the cardboard sheet. Now we'll use this circle template to add the location of our mizzen mast, the aftmost mast on our wreck. You can always use different objects like bottle caps or coins as templates to draw circles. The location of the mast doesn't matter other than it shouldn't be too close to the stern of the ship. Next we're going to add damage to our hull so our map silhouette looks more like a shipwreck. To accomplish this all we need to do is mark up the edge of our map with jagged holes or damage. I happen to like the symmetry of using straight lines to show the damage, but you should draw the breaches in the hull any way you want. I suggest that you don't make the damaged areas plunge too deep into the map itself. We want the map to still be functional for miniatures, so if we have too much damage, we end up cutting away more of our map. I also like the straight lines when it comes to cutting away the damaged areas of our hull. The breaches are easier to cut with a crafting knife or utility knife when the lines are straight. A sharp blade is very helpful here so that you don't leave any lingering fragments in the corners of your cuts. Of course, sharp scissors will be needed to cut the curves of our aft section of the hull. Now we can move on to the bow, or front end of our shipwreck. I've already added the foremast to the map as a point of reference. 
Then we repeat the use of our French curve to create the prow of the ship, which should look like a pointed wedge or a spear shape. We also want the hull to be the same width as the rest of our ship, 30 feet wide or 6 5 foot squares. If you want to be fancy, you can add an overhead view of a figurehead, such as a dragon head or a mermaid, to the tip of the bow. I'm going to stick with the pointed hull so it appears as generic looking as possible. We also have to cut the bow section into shape. If possible, we want to preserve as much of the excess cardboard as possible, because we can use the discarded pieces later. Next we want to add some damage to the join line we have between the two sections of our ship's hull. We could create a type of jigsaw puzzle appearance so the two sides physically join together, but once again I'm going to stick with just a few simple angular lines. When we cut the damaged portions away, we're left with a few holes in the deck where the two sections meet. Next, for all the cardboard pieces we've cut out so far, we want to darken up the edges of our cardboard shipwreck map, so we can easily see the outside edges. I think it helps to have a few different sized pen points to get into the tiny nooks and crannies of the damaged sections. I also think the darkened edges helps create a finished or polished look to our hull pieces. Now that we know the shape of our main deck, we're going to build the lower decks. The easiest way to do that is to make the lowest or orlop deck next. Since the main deck will be 6 squares across, the lowest deck will be 4 squares across. Using the largest French curve will define the edges of the orlop deck, which is the lowest on a 3 or more deck wooden sailing ship. Then we can add the mizzen mast socket where the mast joins the hull on the bottom of the ship. While we're here, we'll also add the main mast in the middle of the hull. Once again, just like on the main deck, we add a few areas where the hull was breached by rocks, cannon fire, monsters, and so on. Again, I want the damage to be obvious, but I don't want to dramatically reduce the amount of mapping surface I can use miniatures on while they're inside the hull. Also, don't forget to thicken up the outside lines and the edges of the cardboard with a sharpie. Now we can move on to the bow of the orlop deck at the front end of our shipwreck. We're going to make this the same way as we did with the main deck. We also want the hull to be the same width as the deck, 20 feet wide or 4 5 foot squares. Again we want the prow to look like a spear point at the tip of our hull. Let's build one more deck, the lower deck, that fits between the main deck and the orlop deck. We want this deck to be 5 squares across, so we have to center our previously drawn main deck on this section of the map so we can get the size correct. We can use the main deck stern section as a template to start and finish it with our French curve. When we place our masts, we want them to match the location of the other decks. We can also use the main deck map as a template to mark where the hull damage on the lower deck is. Once all our markings are complete, we can cut away all the excess cardboard we don't need so that the different levels of our ship all line up. And to finish off the deck, we thicken the outside lines and cover the outside edges as we've done on all the other decks. The top deck at the stern of sailing ships is called the poop deck, which comes from the French la poupier, which means stern or aft. We're going to merge the quarter deck and the poop deck for the simplicity of design. We could add a ship's wheel that is connected to the rudder, which steers the vessel. We could also add a ballista or some other weapon that matches the campaign setting your shipwreck is used in. Next I want to add a few details to the deck, like stairs or hand railings. Stairs are easy enough to add. We need only pick a few squares and draw some steps on them. We don't want the stairs to be too close to the mizzen mast at the back of the ship. We can also change the shape of this deck by using the circle template to add a little balcony between our staircases. We can also remove a little more of the edges of our poop deck so it's shaped differently than the deck below it. Next we can add a forecastle or foc'sle, which is the upper deck of a sailing ship that is forward of the foremast. The easiest way to do this is use the uppermost deck we've already made and use it as a template to create the foc'sle. It starts at the prow and curves down four squares to the edge of our cardboard map. We can add a staircase to the foc'sle so that the sailors can access whatever details we add to the front of our ship. Just like we did on the poop deck, we can cut the foc'sle into an interesting shape so that it doesn't look like the deck below it. We could also add another overhead figure design on this deck if we wish to add some extra 2D features. Now that our shipwreck hull is finished, we can work on a few simple interior details. 
To make our map a little more functional, we'll make a few stairwells or ladders that we can place on the map. The scale will be off, but we can use two squares to draw some parallel lines horizontally across the grid to represent stairs. Then we can thicken up the outside lines with our sharpie so the map piece will be bold and easy to see. We could also make some hatches by drawing a small grid on the same pieces, or we could add a small circular door, or any other shape that you want to use to represent a hatch. Another important interior feature would be bulkheads or walls, so we can have cabins, holds, and other rooms on our shipwreck map. However, rather than drawing those walls directly on the map pieces themselves, which then makes them unmovable, we can use the excess strips of cardboard left over from the start of our build. We can use a jumbo black marker to create bulkheads by coloring one side of the strips of cardboard. We then cut various lengths of these cardboard strips to use as modular bulkheads that create the cabins of our shipwreck's interior. The result is a modular play surface that is perfect for 28mm miniatures to explore, and we can change the shipwreck's interior so we don't have to explore the same wreck twice. The versatility of this map is that we can create several different shaped and sized shipwreck hulls so they can be mixed and matched together to give GMs more play surface options. I have two other modular shipwrecks that I've already made, which is why the sections of this particular ship are so large. I've used some boxes of polyhedral dice to separate the decks and build a 3D version of the ship, but I wouldn't play on them this way. I would lay the maps parallel to one another so that the 3D map wouldn't keep falling over and the miniatures would be easier to reach and move around. These modular shipwreck maps are perfect for the Skull and Shackles adventure path I'm currently running, since the PCs are coming across so many shipwrecks they want to explore. Also, because the interior walls are modular, I can change the sizes of the cabins and allow for larger monsters and place 3D decorations like coiled ropes, barrels, cannons, and treasure piles inside. We hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and find this simple mapping system helpful for your game, and that it inspires you to create more detailed versions for your own game table. If you'd like to support us here at the Gamesmith, there are a number of ways you can help us out. If you haven't already subscribed, please hit the subscribe button now. Hit the thumbs up button and give us a like. Ask a question or leave a comment below. Check out our website at thegamesmith.org and read our free monthly blog. Finally, you can join our Patreon page which gives you access to content like our roundtable podcasts. Your support in any form is very much appreciated. Until next time, I'll see you at the table.